And for those who don't know, like the audio version of Chris Rock's Tambourine is not the same as the Netflix version. No, it's it's way different. It was uh, well, I did a I did a mixtape for this guy Jamar Neighbors, and really the root of the mixtape was the fact that I had all these hip hop samples that I know no one would would want to rap on. I just wouldn't. I didn't know anyone who wants to rap over. I used a lot of French progressive prog rock. Like it's no one's rapping on that, but I liked it and it sounded good. And what it ended up being is making uh, the comics, the jokes sound like theatrical. It makes the bits feel like they're scored. And, it, and so it started to sound a little bit more like songs and less like, you know, a stand up bit. Well, Rock heard it because it was kind of like a, you know, like an Internet, the who's who of Internet, like Questlove got it. Then he tweeted it out. Then he gave it to, uh, uh, to, to, you know, to Neil Brennan and it just passed around and everything like that. And so when Rock heard it, he was like, I don't know who did that, but I want, I want that. And then um, that's where it started. And then I tried to really put some aggressive rare samples on him at first, but he was like, no, nah, we can't cause Netflix owns it. And so then I, <laughs> so then I, had right. to, so then I had to get creative, which that was a whole spiritual process because I was excited to be a part of it, but I wanted to do it my way, but I had to kind of respect Rock's vision. Totally. Yeah. Were you layering the samples after the jokes or were you giving them the samples and the jokes were laid on on top? Yeah. I, uh, I look at it. Well, see, you gotta realize, you know, when Chris Rock calls you, especially where I was at that time, it's like, oh, shit, what is the fuck is going on? And so you get really kind of excited. But just where I'm at spiritually, I always try to work from a place of service. So it was all rock led. It wasn't like, oh, give me the ball so I can run with it. It was like, hey, the first thing I asked him, I said, hey, man, how much does this matter to you? Like, like, what does it mean to you? Like this album? And I go like, you just looking for a money grab? Like, what is this? He says, I want to be the greatest. Like, I want it to go Richard, Eddie and me. And I said, fuck, cool. I'm inspired. So yeah. he goes, oh, well, what do you want me to do? He says, meet my guy, watch the special. It was like a few months before it came out. And he said, like, I want you to just focus on this cop bit. And so that's the way that he saw it. He saw his bits as tracks. So that kind of came from him. I see everything as tracks, but I'm, and I'm a producer, so I enhance the performer. And so he saw his stuff as tracks. And when he saw his, his tracks, I just listened to it. And I was like, well, you know, where does it take you? And is there any way that music can help? And then there was this crazy unreleased sample that I sent him that everyone shit their pants. Didn't use it because we couldn't clear uh, it. And Netflix didn't want to clear it. But it was like, he said, yo, if this is how we're starting, this is going to be nuts. Like we, we sent it to Sarah Silverman. We sent it to everybody. Everyone was like, yo, this is dumb. I was like, right? This is almost like a new genre of music almost. Damn. Yeah, the sample clearance is that one uh, roadblock to the ultimate creativity. Yeah, I've been working feverishly to get the sound I want while also not running into any legal roadblocks. And I think I'm in a good place going into this year. When like uh, like Aziz Ansari, for example, he was on one of the skits. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and is he uh, doing the skit over the beat? Because that's what it sounds like to me. It sounds like he had the music and then did it oh. as opposed to like oh, the no, beat no, coming no. in Every, later. Everybody does their thing and then I come in and I do my thing. Oh, so you kind of scored it after. I, I'm a score. Okay. Like, it, these are these are Rock's ideas. Like Rock had, I don't think uh, the the me and Mrs. Jones thing kind of hit it. So what Rock was kind of doing, he was like, he was like, "Hey man, I have these ideas. Can you do them?" And then I would do them, and he's like, "These are fucking dope. Do you want to come to New York for a week?" And then at the end of the week, it was like, "Can it be two? And I was like, "All right, cool, yeah. here." And I would just hit every idea that he had. So Rock, I have like you know forty percent of the idea. And then I would just add the music and complete the idea. And he's like, man, that's perfect. Like you just, yeah. you just put everything where it needed to be and it all felt good. And are you guys in the studio together? Like, oh yeah. As it's this is even, happening? It's not even just us. Like keep in mind that this is the same time uh, Kanye West did that thing in Wyoming and had everybody out there when he yeah. was you know, picking Drake's mind and, <laughs> and doing all of that shit. And so like Pete, like Rock was out there. And when Rock was in my, Wyoming, you know, he came to New York and then there were people that were in Wyoming and they were coming to New York too. So there was people that were literally like, I was just with Kanye and now I'm over here with Chris Rock. And so like, it was like, it was, it was like a party. I'm not gonna lie. Like um, I'm going to butcher his name, but uh, the guy who did uh, works with Bruno Mars worked with uh, Sarah Winehouse or Amy Winehouse, 
Mark Mark Ronson. Uh Mark Ronson, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mark Ronson was there, plus Love was there, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh Jimmy, I forget his name, the comedian, Jimmy, whatever the fuck. But anyways, everyone's there, everyone's coming in and out, and everyone's and Rock's just like, hey, just listen to this, listen to this, listen to this. And we're all collectively listening to it, and just and you could just see. I don't know, this project grow and we all kind of started to like it more and more as we played it for other people. And it was uh, it was one of those things where like the last few days I was like, you know what? Once I figured out that the food was free, I, said, I think I'm going <laughs> to. Studio <laughs> food is the best. Yeah, yeah. I was like. You, you got know, the menu well, book? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. So once I figured out that the food was free, I think one night I just stayed there. I just stayed there all yeah. night. I was like, well, you know you got to tell your kids that you stayed in the studio one night and what else could it be? Some independent. Yeah. You got, everyone's got to sleep in the studio one time. Oh yeah. I loved it. I, I had such a unique, almost spiritual energy throughout the whole process. It was really dope. 